Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 25 of the chapter Hello Alkanes and Hello Arranes. In the past few videos, we have been studying the chemical reactions of Hello Alkanes. And in this, I explained nucleophilic substitution reactions to you and we did elimination reactions. And then I compared the two, how there's a competition between the nucleophilic substitution and an elimination reaction. We now come to the third category of reactions, that is the reaction of haloalkanes with metals. So that is the topic of this video, reaction with metals. Most of these haloalkanes, when they react, or most of organic compounds which contain halogens like chlorine, bromine and iodine, since we are talking of haloalkanes, basically whenever an organic compound combines with a metal, and results in the formation of the compound with the metal, the compound that is formed is known as an organometallic compound. So the organic compound and the metallic compound. When you have haloalkanes, that is, the halogen is also present, the metal is also present, and of course the alkane is there. Such organometallic compounds would be of interest to us since we are studying haloalkanes and haloarenes. So let me just see. Uh, read this out here. Most organic chlorides, bromides and iodides, that is chloroalkane, bromoalkane and iodoalkanes, they react with certain metals to give organometallic compounds. And these are usually organometallic halides and that is why they are of interest to us in when we study the reactions of haloalkanes. There was a scientist in 1900, Victor Grignard, and Grignard, he discovered an important class of these compounds when he took these alkyl halides and reacted them with magnesium. The magnesium derivative of these were, would, it would be called the alkyl magnesium halide. And this class of compounds were really important because they were highly reactive compounds and they came to be known as the most important alkyl uh, or uh, what should I say, organometallic compounds which, which are haloalkanes. So these were known as Grignard reagents and we call them the Grignard reagents. It's a plural because the alkyl group can be a different one. They are different compounds with different alkyl groups but all of them have magnesium and the halogen is represented by X and it can be a different halogen every time. So in 1900, Victor Grignard discovered an important class of these organometallic compounds that were alkyl magnesium halides represented by the general formula R for the alkyl group, Mg for magnesium and X for the halogen. They were referred to as the Grignard reagents. Other than these, there are more organometallic compounds, many more. They may not necessarily be derived from haloalkanes, but other examples of organometallic compounds would be organopalladium compounds can be there. You can have German reagents. German reagents have lithium and copper derivatives. They are lithium and copper derivatives of, um, of alkanes. Then you have tetracarbonyl nickel and ferrocene. These are examples of other organometallic compounds. Ferro means it has got iron. Here you can see it's got nickel. The German regions have got lithium and copper and you have organopalladium where the metal would be palladium. Coming back to Grignard regions because these are the most important class of organometallic compounds in haloalkanes. So Grignard regions, how are they prepared? They are prepared by the reaction of haloalkanes with magnesium metal in dry ether. They are prepared from haloalkanes with their reaction with magnesium directly. But this reaction, magnesium is a highly reactive metal, but this reaction must take place in the presence of dry ether. So when you have a haloalkane, for example, you have bromoethane, combining with magnesium in the presence of dry ether, you get this ethyl magnesium bromide right and the alkyl magnesium bromide this is a Grignard reagent now if you look at this molecule carefully the alkyl group it has got carbons 
and magnesium is a metal so in comparison to the carbon to which the magnesium is attached the carbon is far more electronegative than magnesium and magnesium is electropositive in nature so the carbon being highly electronegative in comparison to magnesium a proper metal it would have a tendency to pull the shared pair of electrons towards itself thereby now this bond between carbon and magnesium is not ionic it is a covalent bond and since it is a covalent bond and there is a difference in the polarity of carbon and magnesium due to this polarity in the bond the carbon has a tendency to pull the electrons towards itself thereby making it partially negatively charged and magnesium which already was an electropositive element a metal it becomes even more positively charged now the magnesium with the halogen which is highly electronegative has an ionic bond so you see in this molecule magnesium is connected to the carbon by a covalent bond but bromine is connected to magnesium the metal and the halogen are connected by an ionic bond so giving leading what does this lead to the magnesium which became partially more positive because of the covalent bond with carbon and since it is partially even more positive than it should have been and bromine of course is electronegative being a halogen this ionic bond is also very strong and since it is both ionic and it has the covalent character it has got polarity this is a highly highly reactive reagent and its reactivity is the cause why it is such an important compound in haloalkanes. Now, when you talk of reactivity, it is so reactive that substances like water, like alcohol, like uh, amines, which you may consider them to be almost neutral, even they are acidic in comparison to a Grignard reagent. So if they, if they treat even water and alcohol as acids and react with them as acids, it means that you have to dull the effect. When it is formed, it is so unstable. In order to make it stable, you need the atmosphere which will not let it react with others. For that, we use dry ether. Because even a little bit of moisture in the apparatus is going to make the Grignard reagent react with the moisture. So you need dry ether. That's the reason why we need dry ether to prepare Grignard reagents. The Grignard reagents are highly reactive. So any source of proton which can react with them, for example, water, alcohol and amines, are also sufficiently acidic. They also are enough acidic for Grignard reagent. Now the same drawback, if you would call it, that it is so unstable and therefore you need a dry uh, atmosphere in order to prepare it. Even during preparation, you can't expose it to moisture. The same property that it is so highly reactive makes it very useful also. How does it make it useful? If you have the Grignard reagent and it reacts with a little bit of moisture or with water, it results in the formation of an alkane. And when it results in the formation of an alkane, how? R combines H2O is HOH. So R combines with H, results in the formation of an alkane. And MgX combines with MgOHX. It results in the formation of MgOHX. So if you look at this, this reaction can be used to prepare alkanes. So in the Grignard reagent, whatever is the alkyl group, if you make it react with water or alcohol or even amines, you will get the corresponding alkane. Therefore, this reagent or the Grignard reagents can be used to prepare alkanes of your choice. That is your choice of number of carbon atoms depending on what the alkyl group was. And you have studied this reaction in grade 11 when you did preparation of hydrocarbons. You also studied the Wurtz reaction. In Wurtz reaction, what happens? The haloalkanes that are present, that are there, the haloalkanes react with another metal like sodium, which is also highly reactive, and they result in the formation. Here, you will not get something like Grignard reagent, where the metal combines with the alkyl group. Rather, sodium is so much more reactive 
that this reaction also has to be carried out in the presence of dry ether. But what happens here is that the two alkyl groups, two molecules of the haloalkane, they, the halogen gets removed and combines with the sodium. But, okay, this should be balanced. If this is 2Na, two two, this should be 2 and this should be a 2 here. Then it is balanced. So you have two sodium uh, atoms. They combine with the two, uh, the two halogens resulting in the formation of the sodium halide if it is chlorine, sodium chloride, sodium bromide or, and so on. And the two molecules of the haloalkane, the alkyl groups, both the alkyl groups, they join together and they result in the formation of an alkene. But this alkene has double the number of carbon atoms as the original alkyl group. So you could say it kind of dimerizes, it results in the formation of uh, an alkane and that alkane, sorry not alkane, alkene, it is an alkane. It results in the formation of an alkane with double number of carbon atoms from the original alkyl group or the haloalkane. So the only drawback of Wurtz reaction is that you will always get uh, an alkane which is which has got even number of carbon atoms by the Wurtz reaction you cannot prepare alkanes which have odd number of carbon atoms because for example if you have one carbon atom this is let us say it is um, chloromethane then you will get ethane here if it was ethane that is chloroethane you would get butane here so the number of carbon atoms simply doubles and since it doubles you will always get an alkane which has even number of carbon atoms. Next is the reduction, reduction of haloalkanes. Haloalkanes, now when we are talking of preparation, if you see in both of these reactions, you are getting alkanes as the product. If you carry out the reduction of haloalkanes, you get alkanes always. And let us see if you, what are the different ways, what are the reducing agents that can, that can be used. With, you can reduce it with the help of a metal, metal as a catalyst. So you use hydrogen for reduction and what you use as a catalyst is a metal. Metal like nickel, platinum and palladium. So if you have bromoethane, it combines with hydrogen in the presence of nickel at 525 Kelvin, the bromine and hydrogen will combine to form HBr and the alkane, the hydrogen that comes here. So you had, this should be CH3O. How I have made lots of mistakes here. Okay. So this is CH3, this is CH2 and this is Br. So you get CH3, one hydrogen comes here and forms CH3, CH3 that is ethane and the bromine and one hydrogen that was left would result in the formation of HBr. Then you have with zinc and copper couple at 95% and 95% ethyl alcohol. If you use zinc and copper couple and with 95% ethyl alcohol and the reduction takes place, under these conditions, hydrogen gets converted into the, uh, into the atomic form. So you could call it nascent hydrogen. So you have alkyl bromide, that is ethyl bromide. It combines with hydrogen. Again, the reaction is the products are the same. You will get ethane and HBr would be produced. Reduction can also take place with the help of HI, that is hydrogen iodide, in the presence of red phosphorus. But when you use HI, the alkyl halide that you use should also be an iodide. The reason being that it is easier for iodine and iodine to combine to form I2. So you have uh, ethyl iodide or iodoethane combining with HI in the presence of red phosphorus will again give you ethane and iodine will be liberated. In all of these reactions, hydrogen is adding to the haloalkane. Therefore, these are all reduction reactions. And the last is where it takes the reduction takes place with zinc and HCl. You have chloromethane. It combines with hydrogen in the presence of zinc and HCl. And the same thing happens. The H2, one hydrogen combines with Cl to form HCl. And one hydrogen gets added to the alkyl group resulting in the formation of methane. This again is a reaction that you have done in, uh, in your 11th grade when you were doing hydrocarbons. 
So these were the different reactions of haloalkanes. And with this, we wrap up reactions of haloalkanes. In the next video, I'm going to start with the reactions of uh, haloarenes. So with that, I'll wrap up today's video. If you found it helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends, and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.